All right, guys, let's talk about Chevy Nova subframes. I've been getting a lot of questions about stuff like this, so I figured I'd try to explain as much as I can. The 68 through 74 Nova pretty much has the same subframe as a 67 through 69 Camaro. There's a few differences, but it's all functionally the same exact subframe. Now, unlike a 74, uh, since it has the shock assembly that mounts to the front of the subframe, the holes are different. So if you want to put a 68 to 72 bumper on a 74, you're going to have to drill a hole or two. No big deal. Over on the driver's side of the rear of the subframe, uh, your automatic transmission linkage holes may be a little different. Stuff like that. No big difference. Um, like I said, functionally, it's the same subframe. Your frame stands or your motor mount stands, whatever you want to call them, uh, you've got small block stands, you've got inline six stands, and you've got big block stands. They did put four cylinders in these, car, in these cars. I've never seen one, but they're probably the same as the inline six frame stands. The big block stands actually shift your motor over a little bit to allow room for your manifold to clear your steering cross member. Now the problem with these subframes is they were designed for bias ply tires in the mid 60s. And we don't have bias ply tires anymore. I mean, some people run them, but usually that's only for drag racing or for uh, restored cars that are running an original style tire. Unless it's already been done, you probably need to rebuild your front suspension. So I'm gonna talk about some options when rebuilding the front suspension and why you might wanna choose one part over another. Now, typically a rebuild would consist of uh, rebuilding your control arms and replacing your inner and outer tie rod ends, your idler arm and your pitman arm, and then replacing your sway bar end links, which uh, this doesn't have a sway bar on it, but you'd have a sway bar going across and then you'd have end links going to your lower control arm. And then, you know, replacing shocks and maybe your springs, depending on if they're in good shape or not. Pretty much that's a front suspension rebuild. Now, what'll happen is your stock stuff, after years and years of, uh, sitting around will start dry rotting and falling apart. So you can see right here, this bushing is pretty much dry rotted, started cracking, it's already breaking apart here. What will happen is this shaft will start flopping around inside the bushing case, and then your steering alignment starts moving around on you constantly. It won't hold it and it'll be darting around and it'll be pretty dangerous. It won't be a very good, uh, won't be a very good situation. Now, once you get it rebuilt, you've got alignment options. Well, the factory alignment specs are like one degree, one and a half degree positive caster, and then like half a degree negative camber or something like that. Those are terrible specs for modern tires. And you know, you really want something better. So you really want as much caster as you can get uh, up to a point, I guess, because the more caster you have uh, increases your steering effort. And then uh, camber, you want it about zero, really. I mean, maybe a little bit out, but I, I don't want any negative camber. If I had to go a quarter degree positive, it wouldn't affect me too much. But caster, you would like to get two and a half, three degrees minimum, and uh, the car would be much more st stable at higher speed. And then if you start getting above that, your parking, uh, if you're in a parking lot, your steering effort starts going up, which is not really a problem if you uh, have power steering, but if you have manual steering, it's a problem. So you have three basic specs of an alignment. You have your toe in and toe out, which is basically your two tires. If they're pointed in towards each other like this, that's toe in. If they're pointed out from each other like that, that's toe out, pretty simple. Your camber or camber, however you wanna say it, is your tire this way. So this is negative camber, that's positive camber. Zero camber would be straight up and down, perfectly level. Then you have caster. Your caster is basically your ball joint on top and ball joint on bottom completely lined up straight up and down is zero caster. If you move the upper, jaw, upper ball joint backwards, you increase your caster, that's positive caster, which is what you want. That increases stability at high speeds and just makes the car track a little bit better. Now you adjust your caster and camber. Uh, if you want to increase caster, you shim out the back of your control arm, which moves the ball joint back. This, this stays the same place. Your ball joint moved back, that increased your caster. Well, if you want to, uh, then if you want to if that pulls your tire in too far and you want to increase camber and go positive camber, you got to go out. You take the same amount from the back and the front, and that leaves it, leaves, lets the tire go back out and gives you more camber. Uh, if you need less camber, then you add shims the same front and back, and that brings it in. Anytime you change the shims uh, front and back, if they're different sizes, that will change your caster. Now, uh, I'm going to go over rebuilding the control arms and there's some options here because a lot of times these subframes have sagged a little bit 
or even if they haven't, it's hard to get the right amount of castor and camber that you want for the alignment. Okay, I've got some stock control arms here. Now, rebuilding your suspension, basically what you'd do is you'd put new bushings in your control arms and new ball joints in your control arm. Now, this is the upper control arm, obviously. This ball joint's never been replaced, I can tell, because it's still riveted in. The originals are riveted in, you have to grind them or cut them out, and then you bolt the new ball joint in. Now, you can see, just like the one on the car outside, uh, this is all dry rotted and breaking apart. And like I said, eventually this shaft will move around in there and your alignment goes all over the place. Also, your bump stop is pretty much disintegrated and not there. So to rebuild this, you would clean all this up, disassemble it, replace your ball joint, replace your bushings with factory stuff, and you should be okay. Same thing on the lower control arm. You press a new ball joint in here, press the new bushings in here. There's no cross shaft on the lower, ball, or on the lower control arm, um, and then you're ready to go. Rebuilding your control arms with stock stuff is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But these cars were designed for bias ply tires and in the mid 60s. Now we have radial tires. It's 2024 uh, tire technology is way more advanced. So if you've got stock stuff, like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. But if you want to make this, uh, if you want to make the car more enjoyable to drive, safer to drive and more fun to drive, in my opinion, uh, you should upgrade your control arms, bushings, whatever, as much as you can. One thing you can do is rebuild your control arms with better parts. Uh, you can put a taller ball joint in here, which helps with suspension geometry. Uh, I do have stock bushings in here, but you could upgrade these bushings to a polyurethane bushing, which is much stiffer and less roll. Now, what I have here is I have an offset shaft. What this does is it lets me increase my camber adjustment. So since this shaft is now offset to the inside some, I can move well, the scallop, the, the cutaway is, it lets me move the tire out more, which gives me more caster and camber adjustment. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult to get the alignment specs you want out of these cars, so an offset shaft will help correct that, especially if for some reason the subframe is sagging a little bit. Now this Global West shaft is bigger and much more robust than the stock shaft, and you can see the stock one is centered, this one is offset, like I said, it's just better. Now, one of the problems with rebuilding your stock control arms is it's really just a pain in the butt. Getting the old bushings out, getting the new bushings in without damaging your control arm or you is difficult. So um, you can pay someone to do it and it's going to be expensive. They're either going to do it while it's on the car or you're going to take them apart, take them to them, and they're going to do it and they're going to hate it too. Uh, it's not cheap to have that done because it's a pain, to be honest with you. So one of the options you have is to do like I've done on Frank and Nova, and you can put tubular control arms in. Now, these are made by CPP. You can tell the cross shaft is much bigger than a stock shaft. Um, it's got polyurethane bushings in it already. These are lighter and stronger and stiffer than a stock control arm. Now, a lot of people will tell you, you don't need anything other than stock control arms unless you're doing autocross or drag racing or whatever, but I disagree. The tubular control arms are just better. Now, all of them have increased caster built into the control arm. The ball joint on the upper control arm is located farther back, uh, increases the caster, and that makes, you, uh, makes it easier for you to get all the alignment specs you want out of it, where the factory ones, you'll be lucky to get a degree, degree and a half of caster positive. And on the aftermarket tubular control arms, on like on this car, I've got five and a half degrees of positive caster. Now that does make it a pain to drive through a parking lot. I've got manual steering, and the more caster you have, it increases your steering effort. But um, for the high speed ability, since I race this car a bunch and drive it on the highway a bunch, I'll take the little bit of parking lot, you know, uh, drama <laughs> trying to steer the car around. Now I could put a better ratio steering box on here or put power steering on there and it wouldn't be an issue, but it does increase steering effort. Um, if you do this and you're not doing a bunch of high speed driving like I am, you know, three and a half degrees of caster would be great. And you could probably get that easily with most tubular control arms. Some people will say that not all of the cheap tubular control arms have added caster. All the ones I've seen do, and probably because they're just copying a more expensive, better design, and they're using the same geometry, so they probably have added caster also, but there may be some out there that do not. Now, there are some things to look out for when replacing your stock control arms with tubular control arms. Most of the cheap tubular control arms come with junk ball joints. They're not, they're not, maybe not junk, but they're not high quality. Uh, those ball joints right there, they failed on me, 
after about 1200 miles, well, the lower ball joint started squeaking. So I had to replace those. So I went ahead and replaced the uppers and I put a much higher quality ball joint in there. So a lot of your cheaper control arms, if you buy them, uh, you might have to replace the ball joints in them sooner than later. Some of them have okay parts, some of them don't. It just really depends. Um, one of the other problems you might run into is your stock lower control arm has got a recess in it made to hold the spring. Now your coil spring is not flat on the bottom or at least not completely flat. It's got a uh, end to the spring there and it's got a deeper section in the control arm where the end of that spring sits just like that. And that lets your spring sit in there and not rattle around anywhere. So just because the bottom of the spring is not flat, well neither is your control arm, it sits in there really well, not a big deal, that's good. Some aftermarket tubular control arms have a completely flat bottom. And that's a problem because if you put a coil spring in like this on a completely flat bottom, the coil spring will actually rock around some and make noise. I had that problem on a set of control arms I have on my 73 Nova. Now, what I did to fix the problem is I went to a coilover shock and spring. Now, that fixed the problem, but those coilover shocks are also made to where they will work with stock control arms. I would not do that. The reason being is because your spring on a stock control arm sits way out here and spreads the load out there. A coilover spring, the shock mounts here and then it holds the spring up. Well, you're putting all of your spring pressure now right here on this little section right here. And even though it might be strong enough to be fine, I would much rather not do a coilover on a stock control arm. Even though they say you can, I've never done it, but it's just, it's just a lot of pressure for this little area. On an aftermarket control arm on this area, even if it has the, the relief in there, because the ones on this car, they actually have a relief for the stock coil spring but that whole area is much thicker and heavier duty than the stock control arm. So the coilovers aren't really putting any undue pressure on the control arm. Like I said, it's a, the bottom plate of the control arm, even though it is formed for the spring, it's a little bit heavier duty and I have no problem driving this thing and hitting bumps and, and all kinds of other stuff with the car. I've had no issues with the coilovers on those control arms. So when it comes to upgrading the suspension on these cars, you have plenty of options. Some good, some bad, some not so great, some way better than others. Now, like I said, you don't have to have tubular control arms to have a good time in your car. You can rebuild the stock stuff. If you're paying someone to do it, uh, who knows what the cost difference is gonna be. Uh, a, a shop would probably rather just swap out control arms than rebuild them, because like I said, it's a pain in the butt. I don't think anybody enjoys rebuilding them. Uh, and it's easy to screw up the control arms, especially if you don't have the right tools. I've tried to use hammers before. On the uppers, you know, it's doable, but not great. Terrible way to do it. On the lowers, I've mangled up some control arms before trying to replace bushings in them with the right tools, let alone the wrong tools. So hopefully this helps. I'm going to do another video just on coil springs, maybe sometime soon, maybe not. But anyway, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next video.